Hey everyone, this is Shimonica Wiggins and I'm excited for this special, um, special episode of Conversations with the Consortium. Um, I'm excited to soon be joined by Dr. Tomia Austin of the Aswan Foundation and we'll be discussing her upcoming event, the Sickle Cell Trait CMT, I mean CME event that she's offering on August, I mean, yeah, August 19th. So if you are here with us, please like the video, share it, and invite others to tune in. And, and yeah. Hey, Dr. Austin. Hi, Shamanaka. Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? Oh, <laughs> I'm doing, <laughs> I am doing well. All is well in my world. All is well. <laughs> How are well, you? I'm, glad. I'm doing good. I'm glad we were finally able to oh, get yeah. this time together. You know, we yeah. were supposed to do this last week. Is that my so, little trait warrior back there? It's actually my little baby cousin. The trait warrior is in the room. Okay. But, yeah, kids. That's why I said my background. Excuse my background. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we finally able were able to get this done. You know, we were supposed to be here Wednesday, but I'm glad we are getting it done today. Yeah, yeah. So for those who may not know you, I mean, I mean most people know you, but for those who don't, could you please um, introduce yourself and share a little bit about you and a little bit about As One before we hop into talking about your upcoming event? Yes, we can. I am multitasking, trying to share this as we um, as we're live here. But anyway, so I am Dr. Tamia Austin. And just a little tidbit, I, I always introduce myself that way in um, homage in honor of my grandmother, my late grandmother, who died on January 7, 2020. I earned my PhD and her her pet name for me was Pumpkin. So uh, until the day she left, she called me Dr. Pumpkin, and she told me to introduce myself as the degree that I earned. So I am Dr. Tamia Austin, and I am privileged every day uh, since March 1st, 2010, to work in this sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait space as the executive director of the As One Foundation. Uh, our organization was founded by a young man who was born an identical twin in Nassau, Bahamas. Um, they did not have newborn screenings then, so after his families moved to the United States, Houston, Texas, to be exact, when the twins were toddlers, um, they went to American schools, uh, uh, excelled, and also excelled in athletics from where they were um, recruited nationally to play football and Florida State University is where they chose to go uh, being an identical set of twins, one defensive, one offensive player. Uh, Florida State took both of them, gave them full scholarships. They played as true freshmen. And that is where they learned that they had the sickle cell trait uh, based on the NCAA mandate that does test for sickle cell trait in athletes because unfortunately there have been athletes with sickle cell trait that have died during conditioning workouts and their parents have sued the colleges and universities so the ncaa mandated that testing be in place and i have to say that i i'm not exactly sure that that was uh grounded in any type of care for the athlete as much as it was in you know covering the liability of the schools uh, they were advised, uh, not very unfamiliar with what is advised even to this day, that sickle cell trait is benign, asymptomatic, nothing to worry about, you'll live a normal life. Just avoid the 25% chance of birthing a child with disease by not having a baby with someone else with sickle cell trait. And they were sent on their way. And um, February 26, 20, um, 2001, Devon was in a conditioning workout where he was exerting for long periods of time without breaks, without hydration, without uh, the ability to recover. Um, and he died. Um, and because sickle cell trait does not have a cause of death code, his, uh, his death certificate says his death was caused by exertion and dehydration. And it lists sickle cell trait as a complication, 
complicated by sickle cell trait. So fast forward, Devon, uh, Devard is left to, um, yeah, there they are. Uh, that was them award-winning young men in high school. Uh, he was left to still try to achieve he and his brother's dream to play American football, to go to the National Football League, and to give back to you. And I, I feel a little emotional now because he was able to do that, even in spite of losing his identical twin brother. And they were identical to the point that they had conversations that none of us could understand, but they understood each other. And he played every game with his brother's picture inside of his football helmet uh, uh, pads. And each time he would score a touchdown, he would, you know, touch his heart and then point to where he believed his brother was in heaven. Um, and from Washington State, because he transferred from Florida State to Washington State, he was drafted to the National Football League, the Baltimore Ravens. And shortly after being drafted to the National Football League, he started the As One Foundation and named it as one because when they were born, that when his mother was pregnant with them, uh, they were surprised when twins were born uh, because throughout the pregnancy, the doctors, they, everybody had been hearing two hearts beating as one. That's just how close they were. So when Devon died, Devard would doodle two hearts beating as one and he kind of drew out two hearts that were chained together and that became a tattoo on his arm and that eventually became our logo. So uh, that's the origin story of the As yeah. One Foundation. I'm moved every time you share that story. I've heard it a lot of times, but I'm always moved when I hear it. Um, and I also, one of my favorite things I've always have enjoyed about you, I think I've learned more about sickle cell traits since knowing you than I've known my entire life. So I know you love to say that sickle cell trait is not as benign as doctors make it seem. Could you share some things people who have sickle cell trait or parents of children with trait, some things they should know and keep in mind and things to look out for if they're children or if they are athletes? Yeah, so the Devon's death and unfortunately too many other athletes, young athletes uh, taught us a number of lessons and we've kind of whittled that down to a three point lesson and it's based off of the three main risk factors and the three main protective factors you know my grandma always taught me you don't introduce a problem without introducing a solution so number one if you know i feel like saying that sickle cell trait is not is benign or is asymptomatic is like saying you're a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You're either benign or you're not. You're, neither, you're either asymptomatic or you're not. So when parents and when trait warriors themselves tell us, hey, you know, I've been having this pain all my life, but I was always told it was growing pains. Well, if you're 38 or 48 or 58, it ain't growing pain. It's just, it's not. And now I am not a physician. I am a PhD, but I, I would encourage all of our trait warriors to seek out physicians that have done their study and have challenged or at least realized that all of these patients reporting pain and discomfort, um, other symptoms with their sickle cell trait are real. They're not making it up. And I'm saying that because other physicians have told their parents told parents that their, their patient child is making it up, seeking attention. Um, so, and the other, the biggest thing is just treat the symptom. That's what we would tell doctors. But anyway, back to the risk factors. Uh, as was the case with Devon, exertion, elevation, and dehydration. And exertion obviously is physical activity, you know, especially when you don't warm up to exertion. That can be a danger zone for people living with sickle cell trait. You can exert, you can work out, you can run, you can run track. Uh, we believe based on some adjusted statistics, 18% of pro athletes are sickle cell trait warriors. So this is not in any way saying if you have trait, you cannot exert. You can. You just need to warm up. Uh, changes in elevation like flying, like mountain climbing, like deep sea diving, 
can be an area of, uh, you know, discomfort for people living with sickle cell trait. And you can also acclimate because there are certainly people living in high altitude areas like Denver, Colorado that have sickle cell trait and they are fine. But in the case of Ryan Clark, who is a National Football League retired player now who, who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he has sickle cell trait and he almost lost his life playing football in Denver, Colorado. He did lose his spleen. He, he lost a number of other internal organs because of that cellular death, that tissue damage that uh, nearly killed him, let alone his organs. So that change in elevation that you have not acclimated properly to, because we what we know about sickle cells is that they regenerate much slower than normal red blood cells. That is why the chronic fatigue is a thing amongst our disease and trait warriors. Your blood, your red blood cells are not regenerating as fast as normal red blood cells. So your body needs time. So the elevation can threaten that. And then finally, dehydration. All of us, warriors, trait yeah. warriors, allies, no sickle cell trait, no sickle cell at all. We all need, we must hydrate. Uh, and we also push a little further to say that our hydration should take place, especially when exertion is in the mix before, during, and after exertion. Um, don't try to get all your hydration in before you go to bed. Don't try to get all your hydration in as soon as you wake up. You need to gradually drink throughout the day, and you should consume at least half your body weight in ounces of water per day to avoid dehydration. This is especially important for women, women warriors, women non-warriors. Hydrate before, during, and after, and then half your body weight in ounces of water per day. Water, because a lot of things that we drink also dehydrate, like, like, like coffee and sodas. They have dehydrating factors. So that's why we advocate for water consumption. But there's also good news. There's hydrating foods that we can eat, like melons and fruit, cucumbers, uh, zucchini, squash. Those are hydrating foods. So uh, the exertion elevation and dehydration are the risk factors, but the protective factors are warm up, drink up, and rest up. That is so simple. I bet you we could have your little boy saying that really soon. Warm up, go from rest to exertion gradually. Drink up, hydrate before, during, and after. Half your body weight ounces of water per day. And rest up. You have to be allowed to recover. Uh, Rory is, is, you know, working out yeah. in, in her athletics and stuff. Yeah, she and thanks to, to you, I knew. to take breaks. Yeah, thanks to you, I knew all of that. So when she first started soccer at the age of six or seven, I was aware of what she needed to do as a trait warrior. And this last season in basketball was some of her toughest, practices because practice is way worse than the game yes, yes. Uh, me and one other mom we would pull our kids out to give them water because the coach has that mentality that a lot of coaches have that water is for the week you can get water when we have a break and i hate that so that's something like i've learned from you that i've applied directly to Good for you. my daily life Good for and you, yeah and that's thanks to you um i learned a lot when we were at our HBCU college tour. So your presentation there was eye-opening for the students and for me as well. Um, before we start talking about your upcoming CME event, there's one other thing I wanted you to share with everybody, and that is the cancer risk for some patients with sickle cell trait, because I feel like that is a little known fact as well. It is, and it is unfortunate because the cancer is so, um, strong it is it, especially because it's diagnosed so late so the research that we have about renal medullary carcinoma rmc for short it is a kidney cancer is extremely aggressive and currently diagnosed in late stage because 
uh, is usually not detected because our trait warriors, who by the way, are the constant denominator in all RMC patients, um, every RMC patient statistically has sickle cell trait. And there's more research now that's correlating the exertion sickle cell uh, with sickle cell trait in RMC. Um, and uh, what, a couple of weeks ago during the uh, Warriors Convention, uh, the Aswan Foundation once again was privileged to host the trait track. And we had an MD, an internal medicine doctor, uh, Dr. Anna Maldonado, who has sickle cell trait and is also uh, living with RMC. She has gone through about a, a round of chemotherapy and she was at one point in remission, but um, just before the conference, actually, she learned that um, the cancer had uh, metastasized. So we are keeping her in our prayers as she's in chemotherapy again. But she spoke very clearly and succinctly about her condition, about the fact that she did a lot of exerting uh, when she was younger and certainly without any hesitation confirmed that sickle cell trait is not benign, sickle cell trait is not asymptomatic. And if you can have your kidney screened as a sickle cell trait warrior as early as possible, as often as possible, she, she admonishes that that is done because we also know if it can be diagnosed early in stage one or two, then the tumor, can the cancer can be removed and you can really go on and live we know of a few cases uh, where the cancer was discovered uh, early and uh, the, the persons have been able to live beyond that. But by the time there's blood in the urine um, and the, the tumor is fully formed, um, it's often too late. Good news though, there are a couple clinical trials that are going on uh, at our, uh, MD Anderson in Houston, Texas and uh, there's actually a third being proposed. So there is research and, and work being done to change uh, the, the, the future of RMC and certainly the patients that are living with it. But there is this, as they call it, rare kidney cancer called renal medullary carcinoma that does affect people living with sickle cell trait and mm, too many people don't know about it. And uh, I, you know, I'm finding my segue into the CME, but I'll let you take me there, Shimonica. Okay, before we go there, I just had one question. Sure. What should trait warriors ask their doctors to get their kidney screen? Do they just ask for a kidney screen? Like what, what is the proper way to request it? Well, I, what, what I've been told uh, from trait warriors that have been successful is they take them the research, they email them. Okay. They can go to Google Scholar, which is like the, the Google for research or refereed articles. They can go to Google Scholar and pull up articles about RMC and email them to your doctor or print them out and take them to your doctor and say, hey, I have sickle cell trait. My child has sickle cell trait. I ran track or I was exerting or whatever. I would like to be screened, especially if there is lower flank pain. That's one of the symptoms, lower flank pain. Um, that's not a cramp. Um, and, and, and ask to ultrasound or a really strong image of your kidney. That's, that's all you can do. And hopefully you, they come back clear um, but unfortunately, you know, in some cases they come back with bad news, but if it's early stage, more can be done, um, to, to not be fatal. Well, thank you for that. That's good news. That's news. Um, Hey, Dima, that's news people can use. Yes. And speaking of news people can use, you have your upcoming sickle cell trait 360 CME, um, that takes place Friday, August 19th. Yep. <laughs> Here it is, it's a virtual conference. And if you are in need of CME hours or just wanna to add to your knowledge, especially if you work in the sickle cell, sickle cell trait arena, I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to learn more and to better help your patients. 
and the general public as a whole. So Dr. Austin, oh, and also side note, mm -hmm. you definitely should um, refer to yourself as Dr. Austin. Dr. Bailey, mom, and a few other people told her the same thing. So we all refer to her as Dr. Bailey. So mm -hmm. I'm glad your granny told you that. Okay, yeah. so but back <laughs> to the point. Can you, you know, share more about um, the sickle cell trait 360 CME and what people can expect to learn um, by attending and what they can gain. So what we learned over these years is, you know, at least we don't definitely want to think that uh, in the cases of, you know, sickle cell deaths that are preventable, um, a lot of people don't know that they don't know especially when it comes to sickle cell trait, they don't know what they don't know. And then we also confirmed that doctors, a typical medical school curriculum, okay, sickle cell disease is covered in a genetics lecture that's about, you know, inclusive of many genetic conditions over a two week period. Sickle cell trait is covered the equivalent of five minutes or less. So, how can doctors be properly armed with that amount of education when they graduate medical school? This explains why when sickle cell trait patients present in the ER or are even talking about it with their family physician, they're told, well, it's asymptomatic, it's benign. You know, you're supposed, you know, it's a normal life. You're supposed to live, it's, it's not the sickle cell trait, it's something else. They don't know. Uh, it, it's covered five minutes in medical school, and unless there is either familial experience or they know someone, and then let us not even talk about bias, um, because there is that expression that it is a Black condition. And sickle cell and sickle cell trait are conditions that affect many ethnicities of African, Asian, Indian, Latin, Italian, Irish, Greek, Turkish, Mediterranean descent. So it's not a skin color thing, it's a bloodline thing. Um, but the fact is that our patients are still living and dealing with these issues and their providers don't know what to do, have not heard, have not been educated about it. And I just, I suspect that a person that's gone into the medical field, I know they've taken an oath to do no harm, but if they don't know what they don't know, they want to know. So we wanted to help fill that gap. So we, because we want our, certainly want to increase the quality of life of our patients and their care, caregivers and their children, um, because we, we unilaterally believe that sickle cell and sickle cell trait are not mutually exclusive of each other. They exist because of each other. Sick, two sickle cell trait people have a, a big chance to birth a child with sickle cell disease. And every child of a sickle cell disease warrior, every biological child, will at least be living with sickle cell trait. So sickle cell begets sickle cell trait, which begets sickle cell disease, and the cycle continues until it stops. So, and it only stops genetically. And our warriors and trait warriors are continuing to live and live life and do things, and they should be cared for by informed providers. So we decided to meet them halfway. Hey, here is the knowledge that you didn't get in medical school, but we know that you want, and we certainly know that you need to treat this population. So here is a CME. We know they need CEs. We know they need continuing education hours. Uh, continuing, uh, some, some professions need 30, 60 hours per year. This opportunity is a five hour uh, conference, five hour conference. Uh, it is CME, fully accredited through the University of Texas McGovern Medical School. Uh, it will be presented by the As One Foundation, empowered by uh, four other organizations, including uh, the Sickle Cell Community Consortium. But I'm super proud to have Dr. Layla, uh, Maisha Pisante, uh, we call her the Sickle Cell Trait Doctor, present uh, and it's doctor style, it's provider facing. So in a way that doctors are accustomed to getting their information with case studies um, and hopefully 
our, our participants will leave uh, with the ability to better treat their warrior and disease patients, uh, have, you know, we're, we're covering the entire spectrum. The long name is SCT360, full sickle cell hemoglobinopathy spectrum CME conference. So the hemoglobinopathy spectrum is vast. There are the main traits that we know about, but there is research that said there are hundreds of, of hemoglobinopathy uh, um, genotypes. So we're addressing the fact that we need to have our providers armed with information about the entire spectrum and be able to have an appreciation for treating the patient, treat the symptoms. We're, we're definitely having uh, Dr. Masal, who is a leading researcher in the area of RMC. He is the principal investigator in the clinical trials and has quite a few success stories that will be with us as well. Uh, we will have a uh, retired RN, um, Ms. Richie Johnson, who, though she was a nurse, at the time that her son suffered RMC, there was no uh, information out there. But since her work with the Chris Johnson Foundation, which is named uh, after her son, the Chris C.J. Johnson Foundation, they've been able to raise money to fund further research. And we're so excited that there are now uh, two and one pending clinical trial out there. We're, we're talking about family planning and the whole um, uh, motherhood experience of uh, being a trait warrior and, and, and being an expectant mother, as well as the issue that comes up quite a bit amongst our trait warrior parents uh, from those parents that neither of them knew that they had sickle cell trait until they their child was born with sickle cell disease. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to be dealing with that. And, and we're going to give DeVard's story a deep dive, along with uh, Ferran Dozier, who is a military advocate uh, who had uh, rhabdomyolysis and dealt with the exertional issues of having sickle cell trait while in the military and really challenge, contrast the characterization of sickle cell trait as benign uh, in our benign or not session. So five sessions um, and we have tiered pricing for our physician profession, our nurse profession, our student or resident and educator pro uh, pro profession and our warriors, trait warriors and caregivers are invited to get the knowledge 100% complimentary. Uh, they will be able to access their transcripts and have these five credit hours to go toward their um, requirements for the year. Bima says she's so excited. She already registered. So um, that's, that's good news. And um, everyone is in for a treat. You know, I've seen you present. I've seen Ferran present. And this is going to be a really engaging event, it sounds like, where people, um, the people who choose to attend will get a lot of useful information. And um, I'm excited about it. And while listening to you talk, I remembered uh, one year when Rory was starting school, you know, you have to turn in all of the paperwork that ask if your kids uh, have any illnesses or whatever. And I put sickle cell trait and that she would need more water and rest breaks in between gym. And the nurse told me that wasn't true. And if that's the case, I needed to get a note from the doctor. So school nurses, this would be a good event for you all to attend as well, because more children have sickle cell trait than sickle cell. And um, I feel like that's a great demographic that could greatly benefit from this. Um, from everyone who's watching, you can this link that's on the screen, um, https forward slash forward slash as one foundation dot org backslash it's backslash. I'm sorry, y'all. SCT three sixty. It's on the screen, so copy what's on the screen and not what I said. <laughs> but um, I'm really excited. Like I said, everyone's in for a a treat and. Um, I, I'm sure I've looked at the prices. I've seen other CMEs that cost way more stuff. So. Yeah. 
We're, yeah. just, we're just trying to cover our expenses because as a community-based organization um, and actually partnering with the cons uh, consortium, it still is not cheap. It is not, right. it is a financial undertaking to uh, do a CME, but we are honored that we were able to achieve the accreditation, but at the same time, be because we want to offer quality education and we know that our physicians, so to every warrior out there, tell your doctor they need yes. to experience this CME. Tell your doctor friends, hey, y'all need to come to this because it will address the entire spectrum. Uh, and I guarantee you, we'll have a lot of doctors uh, reporting that, wow. I mean, I was talking to a physician today's uh, Monday, so I was talking to a physician Friday who literally said, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Um, and she wasn't ashamed to say it, but there are quite a few that are, that will not let on what they don't know. And to your point, Shamanika, there are best we know, and I honestly believe it's more, there's 4 million people in the United States living with sickle cell trait. There's 100,000 in the United States living with sickle cell disease. So um, it's, it, the, the, the knowledge is warranted. It is is absolutely warranted. We are not in any way trying to overwhelm the medical system. We just want our warriors and trait warriors to be treated, to, and then we want their providers to know what to do when dealing with them. Uh, thank you for putting the prices up on the screen, and we have we have added an educator educator category, which is the same price as the student slash resident. So everyone can participate and get this knowledge. If you want the CMEs. Um, those are covered under your cost, uh, but of course our community members, our warriors, trait warriors, and caregivers, you're absolutely welcome to attend. Um, and we're anticipating, so at, le at, at least we're hoping to move the needle just a little bit more toward more and more of our providers knowing what uh, they can anticipate with their trait warrior patients and, and ultimately increase the quality of life of our entire sickle cell um, patient population. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's the correct step forward for bettering the lives of trait warriors and and bettering the knowledge of people who have to treat treat us and treat them. So um, Dr. Austin, I'm so excited for I'm so excited and grateful for you and your team and everyone affiliated for putting on this event. Um, again, can we share the graphic one more time that shares the date and the time and every... Uh, oh, Shamanika, I, I think we lost you for a second. I'll also say that it's for every specialty, you know, from the doctors that treat bones and joints to eye doctors to uh, internal medicine, family physicians, not just hematologists. There are varying specialties that um, warrant this education. Yes, I agree. I feel like uh, people with sickle cell and sickle cell trait, we see numerous doctors, not just hematologists. Uh, myself alone, I have to see ortho, cardio. Sorry, I keep getting but I have to see so many different providers uh, because of sickle cell and all the things it cause. And mm -hmm. regular people have different doctors as well. So exactly. I agree that um, more should attend and shouldn't just be for the um, people who treat sickle cell directly. Um, Sharonda says that the attendees will get a transcript as well. Yes, um, this is a provision uh, of the accrediting body, the UT um, McGovern School of Medicine, they have access to their EADS system, EED, that stands for something. Um, but that in their transcripts will uh, be long accessible. And again, that they will easily transfer to wherever you report to earn your uh, CMEs and to verify your, these five credits go toward your total for the year. Uh, that transcript lives in that uh, portal, if you will, and you can access them and then transfer them to whoever is your governing body. But that's a, a cool perk. And we, you know, being based in Houston, Texas, we intend to partner uh, for future CME events and uh, CN events. 
CEU events and, and other accrediting uh, opportunities for, because we, we're trying, this is our second iteration. Um, actually, it's our third because we did our first in person at Florida State back in 2017. But we're going to keep doing this. We have plans to educate emerging providers through grand rounds in medical schools. And, you know, we know that the consortium is really pushing and, and partnering with us because, you know, as, as their model, I'm stealing nothing for us without us. We, we're, we're taking it upon ourselves to educate our doctors. And if you remember, similar happened with cystic fibrosis, you know, and we're, 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 we, more people are affected by sickle cell than cystic fibrosis, but cystic, the people with cystic fibrosis took it upon themselves to make the difference that um, they made in, in the, the suffering that their population endured. So we're doing that too. We're, we're needing, I mean, it's a thousand leg table. So we got to educate our providers. We need to educate ourselves. We have to educate our coaches and employers. Uh, everybody needs to raise their level of knowledge, awareness, and sensitivity uh, to sickle cell. And this is one of many ways that we are uh, addressing this issue that affects us and affects the population that we serve. So doctors, emerging doctors, medical school uh, students, uh, as well as the, the population itself. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He's my third child. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sickle cell does not stop. So virtually we can't stop either. We understand. <laughs> Someone's at our door. He goes crazy whenever anyone knocks. Oh, that's a doggy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's Roscoe, my third child. Oh, okay. I got it now. I got it now. No worries. Um, no worries. But I was saying thank you. And just one last time, please uh, share your name and your socials and where everyone can find more information about As One Foundation as an organization and uh, the event as well. So I am Dr. Tamia Austin. I'm the executive director of the As One Foundation, uh, asonefoundation.org, all spelled out. And on all of our socials, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, we are at As One Foundation. On Facebook, we are the As One Foundation or the As One Foundation, T-H-E As One Foundation. Um, and we even at As One Foundation, dollar sign As One Foundation on Cash App, Venmo, <laughs> PayPal. Um, but asonefoundation.org, and you can go to our website or you can put in asonefoundation.org slash SCT360 to register for the CME. Um, you can gift a registration too. Hey, Doc, I want you to go to this. <laughs> I mean, it, that can happen too. But also all of our socials, you can find out what we're doing, what, what we're doing in our partnership, our very proud partnership with the, the Sickle Cell Community Consortium, uh, as well as a lot of our international engaging all, all over the world, educating people about sickle cell and sickle cell trait, um, telling our story, telling the stories of others that you know may feel or, or seem voiceless. Um, all through our socials and our website, asonefoundation.org. I, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Um, Shamanika, thank you so much as a busy, soon to be my wife and mother and put dog mom for taking the time out to give us this, this opportunity and platform to share about what we're doing um, with the Asma Foundation and our partners. I was excited to interview you. Um, like I said, I hate we couldn't do it Wednesday, but I'm glad we were able to get it in today. It's always a joy um, to be on with you. I always enjoy spending time around you. So uh, the pleasure was mine as well. And as a staff member of the Sickle Cell Community Consortium, we're proud to partner with you, not only with our trade track, but these events as well. So thank you as well. And before we go, everyone, please, please, please uh, mark your calendars for Wednesday at the same time today, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll have our regularly scheduled community conversations with the consortium where I'll be joined with other members of the staff. And we're going to give some consortium updates. And we have an event that's right around the corner. So please uh, join us next 
on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. This week. <laughs> this week, this Wednesday, yeah. not next week. And uh, this Dr. Austin was a special episode because with her event being on Friday the 19th, I didn't want to push her out any further. So um, thank you again, Dr. Austin. Thank you, everyone who watched. And um, like I said, if you watched and if you enjoyed it, please like and share the video, share the, the CME link, share it with your doctors, share it in groups because this is information that's needed. And um, again, this has been Shamanica, and I will see you all on Wednesday.